Now we have talked about how, where we are located. We can find it out with PWD and we have understood the prompt. Now, when we will be working on the command line and you will be giving some commands, obviously you will be manipulating the files, copying the files, moving the files, or uh, you might want to open a directory. Now, in case of uh, a graphical interface, you just you know, move around and double click on some folder icon or directory icon and it shows you the contents. Now, whenever we are going to work on the command line, we have to be in a particular directory to get some action done. Let's say I wanted to copy a file from the current working directory to some other location. Let us say I wanted to copy this file foo from here to say inside etc or inside temp. I cannot do a drag and paste. So I have to give a command. Now, when I have to give a particular command, I have to tell where the current file is located. Fine. When I say copy this file foo to temp, I will have to tell the system where I want exactly to copy that file. To understand that concept, we need to first understand what exactly is a path. So path basically is a reference to any file or directory that is there on your system. So if we talk about any file over here, I can refer these files in two manners. One is relative path, one is absolute path. I'm going to get into that details of relative and absolute path later on. But have a look at this on a Linux system. Everything is represented under this kind of structure, which is based on the file hierarchy system. And the top level is called as root. Fine. This is also called as root. We have a root user also that is different. So this is a root of our system. Fine. So this represents our whole computer and it contains the files and other things that will be shown under our uh, Linux based system. Everything is separated into these directories and home where users have their directories. Now, if you wanted to refer to any file or directory, you will give its path and the path is basically nothing but a string which could be starting with a slash or it could be given with reference to the current location and in our path the slash is considered as a separator the first slash refers to the top level and then we can traverse to or point out to any file so let's look over here if i wanted to refer to this particular file say resume we will have to say slash traverse to home fine so slash home after home there is user a now to separate these two things we are going to use a slash again after user a i have to traverse two documents then i will say another slash and then the resume so the reference to this file in one of the ways is called as slash then i have to say home i don't need to type in root that slash is referred as root slash home then user a keep in mind linux file system is case sensitive so you have to type in exactly in that manner then you say documents and then you say r e s u m e resume so this is a reference to a file called as resume now if i don't use the resume part then it becomes a reference to this directory or usually what people refer today things as folder this is the reference to this folder so let's have another reference. Let us say if I wanted to refer to this particular file x resources, then the reference is going to be slash. If you traverse from here slash, we go to etc. So etc slash x 11 and then the separator, then x r e s o u r c e s resources. So in this similar manner, I could refer to any file by traversing this path and providing these slashes in between. And that becomes a path pointing to a particular file or directory. Now these paths can be given in two manners. One is called as a relative path. Another is called as an absolute path. Current discussion which happened was with respect to absolute path. I'll be discussing about absolute path and relative path uh, separately in two different things with some suitable examples. So now try to understand once you have a path to a file or directory, then you will be able to use this reference with your commands.
to get some operation done on that file or directory. So in previous videos, you might have seen I have run some commands and I have tried to navigate to my system. So with reference to this, if I said CD slash ETC slash X11, what is going to happen is CD is change directory command. It will change my current working directory to ETC slash X11. And if you remember the command PWD, if I say print working directory, it tells me that yes, I am located here. So the CD command is used for changing directory. We'll see some examples in a different video. But the purpose of knowing the path is so that we can use or point out to a file or directory with our command. For example, ls command is used for listing files or directory. And when I say ls and I press enter, it displays me the list of files in the current working directory. But let us say I wanted to see or view the contents of the boot directory. I could pass a parameter to ls by saying boot. So since boot is a directory, it will list me the contents of the boot directory. Fine. So the path reference is to be given with our commands to point out to a file or directory on which we want to do some operation. So that's the concept of path. We'll be discussing about relative paths and absolute path in two different videos with some suitable examples.